All right guys, so today we are talking about vitamin K and osteoarthritis, why you should know if you are vitamin K deficient and what it's going to mean because it can truly save you so much pain if you know what it is and can get it under control. So first, just a little bit of information about vitamin K. So vitamin K, you have two kinds. You have vitamin K1, which has a fancy name of phylloquinone, and vitamin K2 is menaquinone. Now you don't necessarily need to remember those names, but if you see those, that's what that means. And so both of these are variations of vitamin K and they have kind of different roles that are extremely complicated that we're not going into today. But after some research, there are some indications that vitamin K is very, very important in arthritis because osteoarthritis has an inflammatory component. This inflammatory component is impacted by vitamin K. So what's interesting is that when people are deficient in vitamin K, they're actually at a much higher risk of developing osteoarthritis because here's the deal. Vitamin K, especially the phylloquinone part of vitamin K, vitamin K1, can actually downregulate some of the pro-inflammatory cells. So what this means is it just prevents those inflammatory cells from, well, inflaming our joints. So the less inflammatory cells that we can have, the better off we'll be. Because if we have high inflammatory cells, we know that it can do some damage to our cartilage and that's when it kind of starts to wreak havoc. So if we can keep these inflammatory cells down, that is a mega plus. There's been lots of different studies about vitamin K and its impact on inflammation and its impact on osteoarthritis. It's been found that if you have higher levels of phylloquinone, vitamin K1, then you have decreased levels of a thing called IL-6, which is just a fancy name for an inflammatory cell. This has been shown in both knee arthritis and in hand arthritis. These are the two that they've studied the most. And it's actually been found that higher levels of menaquinone can actually help with your heart. So that's kind of just an added plus. It can help increase the elasticity of your arteries and stop those from hardening, things like that. But what is very important to note is that as we get older, vitamin K tends to kind of decrease. Vitamin K is super, super, super important for bones and cartilage. So when we are deficient in that, that is when we start to get some of that inflammation and we start to get some of that pain associated with arthritis. And it can actually progress arthritis if we continue to live in a deficit of vitamin K. One thing to know, we can't just throw another pill into the mix. So if you are deficient in vitamin K, what they'll do is they'll measure your levels of plasma phylloquinone. And so if your doctor tells you that, you can tell them that you actually know what that is. So this level of phylloquinone is important because as we are deficient in it, we can't necessarily just jump to a supplement. We can't just go out and buy a vitamin K supplement. Well, you could, but what's interesting is in these studies, it was found that when people supplemented with vitamin K, it was not nearly as efficient as if we got it from foods. Now, do you know which type of foods are going to be the most beneficial for getting our vitamin K? Dark leafy greens. So we're talking kale, spinach, cabbage, even some romaines. All of these leafy vegetables can really help to increase your vitamin K. But how much vitamin K do we really need? The adequate intake is 120 micrograms for men and 90 micrograms for women. So just kind of something to put out there. We can look then at how many micrograms are in whatever we're eating just so we can be in the ballpark. Before we really start to kind of ramp up our vitamin K intake, what I want to warn you is if you have heart issues, especially something called atrial fibrillation, and if you've been diagnosed with this, you probably know that you have it. 
and you may be on certain medications. Now, one of the ones, it was actually found in a recent study, if you are taking warfarin, which is commonly prescribed for atrial fibrillation, and they can be commonly associated with arthritis, then you have a higher, you have an increased risk of a joint replacement because what warfarin does is it inhibits vitamin K. Some of the special proteins and things, again, complex process we don't need to know the details about, but it can impact the amount of vitamin K that we absorb. And so if we're not absorbing that vitamin K, then that's when we start to have some issues. And it can actually lead to a progression of cartilage damage. This was done in a low sample size. So it was done in a less than a thousand people. And they started to kind of see some of these initial findings. And one of the things that they found was they compared it to a different medication that people take for atrial fibrillation, and that's called direct oral anticoagulants. And there's lots of these. Um, I know Xarelto is one of them, but there's lots of other ones. So it brought up the interesting point that it's something to talk to your doctor about. If you are on warfarin and have severe, moderate to severe osteoarthritis, you could prevent some of that pain and some of that progression potentially if you got on another one of these. Now, depending on your health status, why you're taking it to begin with, it may not be an option for you, but these initial findings maybe could start to initiate some conversation so we can potentially prevent worsening of our osteoarthritis because we know that diet and exercise is huge but if we are taking something that's directly kind of impacting our cartilage then we may not be getting the benefits from those other things so vitamin k is super important and it's something that we should definitely focus on getting enough of we have to really be cognizant of not letting ourselves get vitamin k deficient because that can then lead to some more cartilage progression and more pain and more inflammation all the things that we don't want I do also have a blog post that's going to be in the description below that talks about the best anti-inflammatory foods. Dark leafy greens is one of them, and now we know how important vitamin K truly is. But there are lots of other ones, so this is going to show you the best anti-inflammatory foods. So make sure you click the description and head on over to that blog post. My name is Alyssa. I'm a doctor of physical therapy, founder of Keep the Adventure Alive, because we are in the business of doing just that, keeping your adventure alive. And we truly want to help you stay active, stay adventuring, even though you have osteoarthritis. We are bringing hope and optimism through these tips and tricks. So make sure you subscribe to this channel below so that way you can get updates when I do release new videos. All right, guys, go ahead, talk to your doctor about potentially testing you for levels of vitamin K and make sure you can start to incorporate some dark leafy greens into your daily routine to hopefully decrease inflammation and keep you fighting osteoarthritis.